Today we're going to look at a basic and very cheap home recording setup. This setup has some essential equipment to record a microphone and direct instrument and it's surprising how much it's capable of doing. Before checking out this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified about all our new videos. This recording setup that we created is the lowest budget setup that can record multiple real instruments in the home studio. We can do direct recordings of instruments and microphone recordings. The cost of this entire setup was around $150 when creating this video, but we haven't provided a price breakdown since the price of all these products can vary a lot over time. Some things in the setup can also be substituted if you wanted to use different accessories, but the basic idea will remain the same. As an overview, the setup has an audio interface, XLR cable, microphone stand, headphones, pop filter, and instrument cable. We haven't included the computer in this price since we expect people to use whatever computer they might have available to them. Most computers should be able to run a basic digital audio workstation and all the sound is processed through an audio interface over USB, so it's not dependent on what computer you have. Let's start with our equipment choices. For the audio interface, I'm using a Behringer Euphoria UM2. This interface has an input for an XLR microphone, one instrument input, and a headphone output. It also has preamp and level controls for everything, as well as a phantom power switch on the back to be used with a condenser microphone. This audio interface is as basic as it gets, but it will allow us to record a microphone and a direct instrument, so it's fairly versatile. The audio interface is configured on our computer with the ASIO for All driver to make recording and playback low latency, and that way we can even monitor a direct guitar with amp simulation in real time without any delay in the signal. Next for playback, we have our Behringer HPM 1000 headphones. These are a set of fairly cheap headphones with a quarter inch connection and a two meter cable. They're not the most accurate headphones by any means, and they're also made completely out of plastic, but they definitely will allow you to play back your audio through the audio interface, and they can be used for recording as well. Full disclosure though, these headphones are very mid-heavy in their frequency response, and they don't have a lot of treble or bass. For recording with the microphone, we have the newer condenser microphone. This is a fairly sensitive microphone that can be used on different instruments from an acoustic guitar to voice. Since it's a condenser microphone, it will use the 48 volt phantom power that is provided by the Behringer audio interface, so all this works together. The condenser microphone is connected to the audio interface with an Amazon Basics XLR cable. I recommend 25 feet if you're just going to get one cable. It's enough length to get the most places you may need to record in a small room, but you're also not paying for too much length that you might not use. The microphone can be mounted on any stand you may choose, but I do recommend getting a boom stand and that makes it a lot easier to place the microphone in whatever position you want compared to a regular straight microphone stand. Along with the stand, we also have a pop filter. Pop filters are placed between the microphone and the singer for recording voice. These pop filters prevent blasts of air from hitting the microphone when someone is singing or talking into it, otherwise it would create a big pop in the signal. Last, we recommend a simple 10 foot instrument cable. This is used to connect an electric guitar or bass, acoustic electric guitar, or electric keyboard to the computer. These instruments are connected to the instrument input on the Behringer audio interface, which then acts as a direct box and also has a level control on the top. Then you can take that signal and process it with amp simulation software. This can be found in some digital audio workstations like Cakewalk by BandLab, or there are other plugins that can be downloaded online and added to a digital audio workstation that doesn't have it pre-installed. Last for software, we recommend getting a free digital audio workstation to get started. These have a lot of professional features for recording audio, working with MIDI, and mixing our track. We have a separate video on this channel for some of the free digital audio workstations that you can choose to work with this home studio. Thanks for checking out this video on a basic budget home recording setup. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notified about all our new videos. You can also check the video description for links to products featured in this video and all our social media accounts.